Sarah from Filster here, and today we're going to make a wedge out of a yoga block. So the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, what does your wedge need to do? So what do you need the gun to do and how do you need it to interact with your body? So to do that, you're going to just put your gun on. Obviously, I'm wearing it over my clothes in this example, just so you can see it better. Uh, but you put your gun on like normal and do the poke and check method where you press on the gun to see which parts of the gun you need to move in order for it to conceal a little bit better. You can see here when I lift the bottom of the gun, especially this corner here by the slide, it helps rotate the grip in towards my body more, which is what I want my wedge to do. So this test tells me I'm gonna need more wedge on the slide side of my holster than I need on the grip side, because I need that little extra bit of rotation along with the grip tuck. Once I have a pretty good idea of what shape I need for my wedge, I'm gonna start gathering all of my tools together and we're gonna make this wedge together. For materials, I need, obviously, a yoga block. Uh, this is from Walmart, cost about $6, and you can get these anywhere. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, this one, as you can see, has been used a few times before. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna keep rolling with this. And I'm gonna use a hacksaw to cut it up. I've got my industrial adhesive Velcro that's going to go on the holster and on the back of the wedge so they can stick together and I can take it off and reposition it as needed. Uh, let's see, I've got sandpaper, I've got a scissors, I've got a uh, craft knife here for uh, making smaller cuts. Of course, I have my holster and a vacuum cleaner for cleanup duty. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, get an idea of how big my wedge needs to be. I'm looking at my holster here. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be enough height. I don't want it to come up too high or it's going to start interfering with where my belt will lay over it. Um, so I'm like, you know, I want it to be about this tall. So we'll just use this little chunk here that's kind of conveniently cut down. So I'm going to take my hacksaw and just take a chunk off of this. Now, this may be a bit thick, so we're going to reduce the size down a little bit, and I'm going to start kind of sculpting it into the shape I need. So I want it to uh, taper from the bottom to the top. Let's say about there is probably a good start. And I also want it to taper again um, from the front to the back. So I want the slide side of the wedge to be a little bit taller so that it will angle that grip in towards my body a little bit more. And we'll round the edges off of this a little bit. And don't worry just yet if it looks a little rough, we're gonna smooth it out a little more with sandpaper later. Okay, so next I'm going to scoop out the back a little bit so it fits a little more flush with my holster. So I actually take a pen here and I want it to line up with the bottom here like this. 
and there we go and you can see that the holster back since it's not flat I'm gonna actually scoop out the back a little bit so that it'll fit a little better so right about there we're gonna scoop that portion out Okay, so now that I've got my basic shape, I'm going to use the sanding block to sand down the edges and kind of smooth everything out a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much if the edges are rough, but it, it does help the uh, Velcro stick a little bit better. And remember, this is foam, so if you need to um, if you need to cut a concave contour into it, you can kind of flex the foam. Uh, and cut that way. So as you're cutting, keep in mind that you're going to be sanding this down. So just cut a little bigger than you think you need and you'll take off the excess as you go along. So once you've got a rough shape that you kind of like, you're just going to put your gun on and dry fit it and see if you need to make any adjustments or tweaks or if you really screwed it up, if you need to start over from scratch, <laughs> that's okay. You can make like probably 20 of these with a single yoga block. So uh, don't be afraid to experiment and try different things. Okay, so that is looking pretty reasonable. So I think we're ready to Velcro this on. Take a quick break to clean up. Next, we're gonna put Velcro on both our holster shell and our wedge itself, and that'll allow us to take the wedge off and reapply it and reposition it and move it around. So it's super handy. Again, before we do this, we're gonna dry fit our wedge Right about there, I think, is where we had it. Uh, and we're going to make sure to get the Velcro um, in an area where it's going to have enough contact to hold the wedge on. So I'm going to make sure I get Velcro here and here, because those are the areas where the wedge is going to sit. Very important, your Velcro has a loop side and a hook side. And you want to make sure to put the loop side on your holster shell so that you have the option of wearing your holster without the wedge if you want to run it without it. You also want to round the corners of your Velcro so that it uh, doesn't peel up as easily. So this just helps kind of resist uh, wear over time. Make sure we squish all of our corners down as best we can. All right. Now we're going to put our Velcro hook side on the wedge itself. And same thing here, you want to round off the corners to help prevent wear. You can also, if you want to get a better adhesion on this uh, Velcro on the wedge here, you can also use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat up the adhesive before you apply it. That is helpful. So 
So we're just going to stick this down pretty good. Uh, in this case, when I take my wedge on and off, I'm always careful to hold the corner of the Velcro down so that I'm not pulling the adhesive part away. And there we have it.